For nearly 70 years, the Mercedes-Benz SL has sat at the very top of the company's luxury roadster hierarchy. Unfortunately, the previous generation was beginning to get overshadowed by cars like the S-Class Cab and the AMG GT Roadster. Thankfully for 2022, there's an all-new SL Class, and for the first time ever, it's been designed by Mercedes-AMG, the company's in-house performance division. What that means is it's built off of an exclusive AMG-developed chassis. It comes standard with two twin-turbocharged V8 engine options, and for the first time ever. It also comes standard with the company's 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive system. So today I'm out here just outside of Los Angeles, California, heading over to Palm Springs, where it's normally a sunny state. However, today it's raining to drive the brand new 2022 SL55 and SL63. And the big question I went answered, has Mercedes AMG done enough to make the new SL class more desirable again? Stay tuned to find out. So an all-new version of the SL really doesn't come around very often. In fact, the previous generation, known internally as the R231, was in production from 2012 all the way up to 2020. The company just discontinued it last year. And for 2022, as you can see, they've taken a lot of styling cues here from the AMG GT, at least the current generation. Remember, there will be an all-new generation AMG GT two-door, which Mercedes AMG says will be far more different versus the current model. And it should also help differentiate the two cars. This vehicle here essentially replaces the the S-Class Cabriolet and the AMG GT Roadster. Now, first approaching the new SL class, how could you not get weak at the knees when you look at the design? This is seriously one attractive looking car. And remember, the SL competes with other uh, high-end luxury roadsters like the Porsche 911, a Bentley uh, Continental, uh, and an Aston Martin. This is just a really attractive looking vehicle. And it really takes a lot of styling cues, of course, from the current generation AMG GT Roadster, one of my favorite vehicles. However, it tries to blend the um, styling cues, of course, of the S-Class cab and maybe the comfort of that vehicle. The front end of this car definitely has an in-your-face look to it. It has the company's corporate Panamericana style grille with the vertical chrome slats. My tester is an SL55, so it's missing uh, something like the AMG Night Package, which would essentially black out the chrome. It looks really good with this hyper blue along with the company's signature full LED headlights with an LED daytime running light and turn signals. These are also adaptive swiveling headlights. There's some functional vents here in the lower front fascia. And the chrome here on the lower front, I actually do wish it was kind of blacked out, uh, but it does look pretty good with the hyper blue color. Of course, it has the signature very large Mercedes uh, logo at the front. That's what uh, houses the radar sensor for the adaptive cruise control, the Distronic, the automatic emergency braking. And this vehicle has a very long nose because it only comes standard with a V8 engine, which we'll talk about the powertrains in just a moment. But because this is built off of an AMG exclusive platform, it's now significantly larger. The wheelbase has been increased by about four inches at around 106.5 inches long. The overall length is around 185 inches. So again, it's about three and a half inches longer versus the previous generation, which definitely gives it a much more menacing look to it. It definitely looks a lot more expensive and a lot more sporty. Now my tester here has these uh, optional 21 inch wheels Wheels. This has more of the shinier machine finished look to them. Uh, Mercedes AMG also offers a black finished wheel. These are wrapped in 275 front, fatter 305 at the uh, rear. This car does come standard with all wheel drive, which again is a first for an SL. And I think it was the right decision because the AMG GT only came with rear wheel drive and this will help differentiate it even more from something uh, like the uh, new AMG Roadster or AMG GT Coupe, which will be coming out later next year. Now looking at the rear, you can see they've added a new soft top for this vehicle, which uh, Mercedes AMG says that they switched to a soft top because it's a simpler design. It's gonna make the vehicle a little bit lighter. In fact, it shed about 46 pounds off of the top versus the previous generation's hard top. And they were also able to make the rear end a lot more slim. The old one had a really fat rear end uh, to accommodate the top mechanism. And this one here, you can see, looks a lot like uh, the current generation AMG GT Roadster with a slightly different look to the taillight design. I love the finish here with the full LED taillights here. Although I do wish Mercedes would start doing a sequential LED turn signal. I think it would really make this car stand out even more in terms of the design. And you can see here the signature quad outlet exhaust. I love the fact that this also comes standard with the company's signature bi-turbo V8. So let's go ahead and fire up the engine so you can hear how it sounds like real quick. Even though 
this is just the SL55, it has a really nice sound. In fact, it sounds a little bit louder than the last AMG models that I've tested with this powertrain. Now, opening up the trunk, this is another area where some a lot of Roadster buyers are concerned with. It actually got a slightly smaller trunk this year, even though they switched over to a soft top. The company says you got around eight and a half cubic feet of space. That's technically when the top is up. It shrinks to seven and a half with the top down, although looking at it here, the top actually doesn't really take up any space because of that new space-saving Z-fold top. Uh, this is still a pretty usable top. You should be able to uh, fit a carry-on luggage in here, but something like the Porsche 911 uh, Cabriolet is probably going to have a little bit more space because of the uh, front trunk. Now, a lot of these high-end luxury sports cars or roadsters do have a deployable spoiler, as does the new SL. Basically, you can push a button or at, a, at speeds above 70 miles an hour, the spoiler will pop up. And you can see when it pops up, it definitely gives it even more AMG GT C or GTR vibes. It just looks really good from the rear, which is the angle that you're gonna have to get used to because of how quick this car is. So now that we've talked about the exterior of the new SL, let's go ahead and hop inside the interior. The first thing I wanna show you guys is the key fob. This is the newest key fob that we've seen on all the newer Mercedes products. It's a really nice, hefty, heavy feeling key. It's a little bit large. Surprisingly, I don't believe the company offers a phone as a key option, but you can use the Mercedes Me app to kind of access the car. Just like the new S-Class and EQS, it has the company's new pop-out door handles. You can see it lies flush with the body. And if you approach the car or you just press the unlock button, the door handles do pop out. I did find the door handles to be a little finicky at times. Uh, on the passenger side, mostly on the driver's side, it worked perfectly for the most part. But you can see here, looking at this cabin, I really love this color combination that my tester has with these hyper blue exterior with this kind of white cream, full leather interior. This is, I believe, the upgraded Desenio leather. This model here looks like it has more of the luxury seat options. We actually saw three different seats. There's a sport seat option, but I think for this car, you may as well just go with the luxury seat option. I did notice a couple things here because it's raining. When you open the door, the water kind of falls right here and it kind of hits you right in the leg as you open the door. That's really only gonna be a problem if you guys are driving this car in the rain, which personally I wouldn't wanna do uh, because it's a really nice uh, roadster that I wanna drive with the top down. The door panel you can see here is covered in the full stitched leather that you find all over the dash. You can see this particular one here has the upgraded Burmester stereo system, along with your aluminum trim and piano black accents here on the door panels. It's just a really nice first impression, and you can see it also takes a lot of parts from the new uh, S-Class. Now getting inside, the step-in is really low, or maybe I'm just getting too old because it's a little hard to get in and out of the vehicle. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Surprisingly, no soft closed doors, but it is a Roadster with pillarless doors. And then when you wanna start the vehicle up, the button is right back here. It does get blocked a little bit by the steering wheel. You can hear once the vehicle starts up, it just sounds really, really good. Uh, and um, the steering wheel is powered tilt and telescoping. You have two digital displays. There's a 12.3 inch display here and then a smaller 11.9 uh, inch display here. This is essentially the same display that we get in the new S-Class. It's a vertical oriented tablet. It includes the latest MBUX infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. We'll talk about that in just a moment. You can see the dashboard here has the usual high quality materials, full leather stitching. I love the new uh, circular vents with the new design here. You have full leather, again, even on this lower portion of the dash, real aluminum trim, lots of piano black plastic, although you can, I believe, replace this with wood if you guys prefer wood. Uh, and I also love the new steering wheel. This is the same steering wheel on the um, S-Class, I believe, and the AMG GT four-door. It's got a flat bottom design. You've got your drive mode selectors right here uh, on these two little vertical or rotary knobs. You have uh, touch sensitive controls where you can control and change the way that screen looks over there. You have paddles on the wheels and then you can also adjust the screen over here if you guys don't wanna use the touch screen. There's a nice area here where you can rest your hand um, to kind of manipulate stuff right here. And then there's a couple of other additional hard buttons or, or touch sensitive buttons over here. Now looking at the CarPlay, you can see, let me go ahead and go to that and show you guys what the CarPlay looks like. There's a little screen over there where I can tap. My phone should already be connected. Um, but for some reason, it's not wanting to go to the CarPlay. Let's go ahead and go here, waiting for CarPlay device. Sometimes the wireless CarPlay doesn't always work immediately, which can be a little frustrating when I'm trying to show you on video, but hopefully it'll go back to that later on. You can see there's the GPS uh, right here. This is the factory embedded GPS, which does work well. It does include things like their augmented reality, where it'll show a little on the camera screen. It'll overlay the, the turn by turn directions onto the actual camera screen. That all looks fairly nice. Um, going over here back to the home screen, you can see there's all your usual sources there. This car does have interchangeable ambient lighting with 64 different colors. And the cool thing about this interior is 
the screen actually has the ability to switch angles from uh, 12 degrees all the way up to 32 degrees. You just have to push this button right here. You can see, and then you can adjust it completely to be totally vertical. It allows for the vertical orientation uh, when you guys have the top down, it'll help to reduce glare. And then if you want, you can kind of push the button here and just go all the way down. This is a really cool feature, although I, I did notice one thing about the screen. When you have it all the way up, I noticed it's a rather chunky display. I kind of wish that Mercedes had made it more of a thinner display. A lot of like a lot of modern televisions have a slightly thinner look to the display. It's kind of a small nitpick here, but the the display you can see looks really good. It's really easy to use. And you can also go to the comfort here. You can adjust things like the seat massage. There's only surprisingly three different levels of massage. Uh, and you also have heated and cooled seats. The seats themselves, they adjust in like 24 different ways, I believe. And you have three person memory on both sides. The air scarf that you can see here is standard equipment on all SLs. It blows warm air onto your neck so you can drive when it's chilly outside. Um, and you can see the heated and ventilated seats also are gonna make the cabin even nicer. This right here is all fairly easy to use. I'm on a short drive here, so I'm not gonna go too much in de into debt with this system, but you can see it's got dual zone climate control where the climate kind of stays over here. Uh, and it also uh, has over the air updates, which is kind of what we expect. Now, when you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your full 360 camera. It does a really great job of showing you what's behind you, including my drive partner. And you can see it shows a top-down 360 view. It's pretty much what you expect in the industry. You can also go to several different views where you can uh, rotate around the car 360 degrees. This is all fantastic. In fact, the graphics and resolution, what I expect from a car with a six-figure price tag, I think AMG or Mercedes is doing a fantastic job here. The system also has their voice commands where you can say things like, hey, Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Tell me a joke. Sorry, I'm busy looking at the road. <laughs> uh, again, Fairly easy to use, although at times it doesn't always want to work. But again, um, MBUX is one of the better systems in the industry. And I also love the screens and the graphics and the resolution. It all just works well. This right here is a fingerprint scanner. It, has, it basically allows you to get in as a driver, touch right there, and it'll remember all of your presets and controls. It seems more like a gimmick to me because I feel like they could kind of program that into the key or use the smartphone app and it's kind of redundant. To put the top up and down, you basically push this button here. And there's no physical hard button to put the top down. This is where I think uh, Mercedes should have done with a physical hard button. To do that, you basically push this button here and you have to slide this all the way over to the right and hold it. When you slide this over to the right and hold it, you can see the top goes down in about 15 seconds and you can do it at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. I basically have to keep holding the top and it'll beep once it's done. It even shows you on the screen what uh, position it's in. And then you have to kind of manually close the windows. And you can see here, when the top is uh, down, it automatically tilts the screen into its most vertical orientation. So it allows you to see that. To put the top back up, you basically have to do the same thing. Push this button over here and then slide this over to the left. And you can see it's a little finicky. My concern is, what if this screen decides to stop working when you're in the middle of putting the top up and down and it freezes and there's no physical hard button? That could be a huge problem. So hopefully the company has kind of thought about that and they made sure that the screen wouldn't do something like that or at least give you some kind of backup in case that happens. But you can see here, pretty quick op open and close operation. And then you just push this little window switch button over here and that allows you to close all four of the windows, which is nice. And when the top is closed, you can see it's a very nice top. It, it actually has suede Alcantara on the roof. It actually is relatively quiet in here, although so we'll talk about that during the driving scene uh, later on about how quiet it actually is. But overall, the interior, full of great tech. It has a nice center console storage over here with two USB-C charging ports. It's got a wireless phone charging pad over here with your cup holders. Uh, although no heated and cooled cup holders, they, I have found that on other Mercedes models. And then over here in the glove box, you can see it's a decent size. It's damped, but not lined with felt. So overall, the cabin feels relatively luxurious, but because this is uh, the new generation, it does have a back seat. So let me go ahead and hop back here and show you guys what the space is like. All right, so we haven't seen a back seat in the SL since 1989. And obviously this is not gonna be someplace you're gonna wanna put your tall friends, but I figured I'm five foot seven, I'm not very tall. Let's get back here and see if I can actually fit back here. Now, when you wanna get back here, you just pull this little strap. The seat will electrically move forward and actually moves forward a pretty decent amount to give you room to get back here. Now, obviously you're probably gonna wanna use this mostly for stuff, but Mercedes says that somebody under five feet should be able to sit back here. So I have the roof off. Oh, God, <laughs> okay. When I'm sitting back here, you can see it's very upright, so it's not the most comfortable. If I bring this back, it's gonna probably crush my knees. <laughs> wow, ow, ow, okay. Okay, yeah, so 
clearly this is just for passenger or for or for packages and stuff or i guess you could also put somebody back here that you don't like but if you're over five feet tall you're definitely going to want to not want to sit back here but i also probably wouldn't want to put kids back here either it's just not a very comfortable seat now underneath the hood of the new SL, Mercedes AMG makes it pretty simple. It's going to launch with two standard V8 bi-turbo engines. This is the four liter twin turbo V8 that we know and love and so many other AMG products. The six cylinder model is not coming back for now, but the company does say that a new hybrid, plug-in hybrid version, which will have even more power than this, will be coming out at a later date. But I'm gonna focus primarily on this model. This is the SL55, which means it has the four liter bi-turbo hand assembled V8. Uh, that we know and love in so many other products. It makes 469 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. Now, if you guys require more power, the SL63 will have this same engine, but with the boost turned up to de deliver 577 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. That model essentially replaces the old SL63, um, which had a 5.5 liter V8, while this model here replaces the old SL550, which had a 4.7 liter twin turbo V8. This has roughly 20 more horsepower than the previous generation. It all goes out through a nine speed multi clutch transmission. So essentially, they take their nine speed automatic, replace the torque converter with a multi clutch unit. So it's kind of like a dual clutch, but it's not quite a dual clutch, but it's also not quite a torque converter automatic. Formatic all wheel drive. Uh, is standard and it has a rear drive bias. So essentially this car will still let you do some of those tail out shenanigans, but it's gonna give you better all weather traction in weather like this. Uh, this vehicle here hasn't had fuel economy figures announced just yet. I'll include that of course in the description when Mercedes has those figures. And in terms of curb weight, the company does say that this is about 250 pounds heavier versus the previous generation. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna estimate this car's right around 4,300 pounds. Performance is pretty strong. The SL55 will do zero to 60 in about 3.8 seconds while reaching a top speed of 183 miles an hour. The SL63 will do it in about 3.5 seconds while reaching a top speed of 196 miles an hour. All right, so we are finally behind the wheel of the brand new 2022 Mercedes AMG SL55. And I'm joined, of course, by Jared from Car Buzz. If you guys haven't seen his stuff, he does amazing videos on YouTube and on TikTok. So be sure to check him out as well. Now, we're starting off our day in the SL55, and we haven't seen an SL55 in like over 10 years is yeah. I think what we figured out. But uh, the first thing I want to test out is the 0-60 to because um, we found a nice straight road. This is the slower model, but Mercedes says it'll do it in 3.8 seconds still, which is pretty fast. Let's see. Oh, it tightens oh. the seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the seatbelt's still like holding me tight. <laughs> the seatbelts do like a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, I think that's the first time I've ever experienced a car that did that when you're using the race start. But I've, uh, yeah, I've never seen that before. But look that's at that, 3.66 seconds. That is faster than Mercedes's claim, which was 3.8, which is typical. The Germans are always conservative. And it's damp. It's damp outside, right? But now that we have Formatic Plus all-wheel drive, remember this is the first SL to have all-wheel drive in its like 70-year history. Uh, it's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> oh my God, and this is the base engine. That's that's the cool thing. So the, the SL63 will be three and a half seconds. So that's probably closer to three seconds. That's what guess. we've We haven't driven the SL63 no, today yet. Not yet, which we're, we'll, in, we'll switch into later. But this car has plenty of power. Oh, yes, it does. It sounds so good, too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, they've done. They've definitely done something more with the exhaust in this car. And keep in mind, we have the roof up right oh, now. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try to put it down later, but it's as you can see, we're in. We're heading toward Palm Springs, and it's freaking cloudy, and it was raining earlier, which is unheard of in California. California? <laughs> like Jared is from Florida. He's like, I came all the way to California to be stuck in the rain. I like, brought the rain in my suitcase. <laughs> yeah, you did. You brought it from Florida, Jared. Uh, Good job. But um, now that we finally found some curvier roads, this is where Mercedes wants, of course, to talk about how they've really made this car a lot sportier, but it's also still a GT car because this is the first AMG SL that's built by AMG, developed exclusively by AMG, and it doesn't share anything with the current AMG GT uh, Roadster is what they say, but the outgoing, one, the outgoing but it, run. But it will be using the same platform as the next generation GT, which will be a coupe only. And they, they say it'll be completely different than this. It'll have two different personalities, but this what this car essentially replaces is the S-Class cab in their lineup, and I guess- um, And the GT Roadster. The GT Roadster. It's kind of like a midpoint. So if you thought the S-Class was too soft, you thought the GT Roadster was too crazy, 
this is middle ground. Yeah, no, and I think they've definitely nailed that. It has, it, we drove it on the highway here about, you know, an hour and a half or so to get to this area. And it was surprisingly comfortable in comfort, even in Sport Plus. Um, we're not sure if this one has the the hydraulic dampers um, or the, the, or the, the adaptive dampers. dampers. The you can get a steel suspension on this 55. The 63 automatically gets the hydraulics. Yep, and it also gives you the limited slip diff limited as well, slip diff. which I'm not sure if this one has it. But with 4MATIC plus all-wheel drive, I mean, unless you plan to track this car, which who's going to do that in their SL? Come on. So, yeah, it doesn't <laughs> seem like that. Get a 911 if you're going to track it, to be honest. Like, yeah, I would, I would still get a 911. But this car, I have to admit, I am very impressed with the overall feel. It feels like a much more exquisite car now. The old one to me just didn't feel all that special. It's and also, boat. yeah, it was a boat. It looked like an old person car. This one doesn't look like that anymore, especially in this one, this uh, hydro blue. What is this? Hyper blue. Hyper blue. blue. Hyper blue. Color. I love this color. <laughs> yeah, and this is the only one out there that was in the hyper blue that they had for this press drive. So I was like, good job, Jared, for grabbing this. Yep, I, I, <laughs> I got him this for, thumbnail. <laughs> for snagging, him, snagging us the good color. But this transmission, I want to talk about it a little bit because it's a nine speed multi clutch. <laughs> I know, I saw that. <laughs> nope, wasn't speeding. <laughs> good, good thing we're stuck behind some slow traffic right now. Yeah. Thank you, slow traffic. <laughs> but uh, I did want to talk about the transmission a little bit because this is their nine speed, basically their nine speed automatic where they t plucked out the torque converter and they put in a multi clutch system. So it's not necessarily a dual clutch, but it kind of is. We didn't want to get into the specifics with that. It's confusing. It is a little confusing. It, Jared was mentioning that it's not as quick shifting as the old dual clutch in the uh, old model, I believe. And, and nowhere near as quick as like. PDK. No. Like you hammered it in like ninth gear on the highway in race mode mm -hmm. and it took like a second, right? Like Yeah, it, it still had a, like a slight delay when my foot went to the floor to when it finally shifts. Now when it does shift, it sounds good. It shifts quickly, uh, but it has a lot of gears to go through. So it, it feels more like an automatic. It's not like PDK where you're in seventh gear and it goes seven, three, like instantly that smack. Like Yeah. Like, and that's, that's why I always say Porsche has like the best PDK or the best dual clutch in the business. The and and it's, it, it, it's very true. Now, um, Going around these corners here, sadly we are stuck behind this car, which is kind of a good thing because there was a cop earlier. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the handling because the weight of this car did increase. Um, I read in this press release that Mercedes said it increased by about 250 pounds. So roughly this model of our driving is probably around 4,300 pounds. Um, it's, it, it got heavier because of the back seat and I'm not entirely sure, it got bigger. This car is about four inches or three inches longer overall. So it's still actually relatively light by the modern all, cars. The all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive also added some weight. That's a lot of weight. And the ironic thing is that it got heavier this year and SL, if you remember correct, remember, it stands for super light. That's yeah. what the name comes sport, from. Sport light. <laughs> well, it's, it's in German. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a German word yep. for super light. And I'm just like, that's so ironic because this is definitely not uh -huh. like, not light, but by modern car standards, it's not, it's not the most heavy. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting used to all these electric cars that have like 5,000 plus pound curb weights because of how heavy the battery packs are. They just, they just have to be. Um, but it's just, it is very refreshing to me that this car is, uh, it, it is a gas car. Like they are, they are mentioning an electrified model is coming as well in the form like of the- um, GT or SL63 E. Or, or it might even be a 73 because it's supposed to have like 800 horsepower is what they're I think, saying. So I think they dropped the whole 73. We wanted it to be called 73 because mm -hmm. that's what they used to be called. But right. I think they're going with the 63E performance because the GT4 door mm -hmm. is going to get that first and it has like 700 and something <laughs> or 800 horsepower, isn't it? I think it's yeah. almost 800 horsepower. It is, it is a lot. Now, I actually want to try putting the top down here because okay. we might as well try putting the top down. Now to do that, we go into, or not Just that watch one. your GoPro on that side. Yeah, I will. The window's gonna go down. I'm gonna actually take the GoPro off. All right, <laughs> and let's so, put the top down. So we do the uh, uh, top and then you slide it like this. Nope, maybe you have to hold it. There we, there go. we go. So you do have to hold it like you would a button, but it's on the touch screen. It's kind of interesting. Mercedes says this goes down in like 12 seconds, uh, seconds, 15 seconds. And I think you can do it at speeds up to 37 miles an hour. So that's uh pretty quick. Done. There you go. Okay. It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. And I'll, I guess I'll put the windows back up. Put the windows back up. We have our wind deflector, which is here. So you put oh. that up. The, these help a lot. Like people are shocked because the wind in a convertible comes this way. So that really does block out like a lot of it. Yes. Okay roof down this is the first time it's been raining all day so <laughs> it has been waiting raining all day and this is why it's so nice that it's not raining and i just want to do one more zero to 60 just because there's nobody behind me and let's do it <laughs> we'll see that seatbelt thing again oh <laughs> it didn't have as much grip there <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> 3.76 was that one. <laughs> and it says the top is not all the way down. Close, uh -oh. soft top. Oh wait, no, yeah, it is. Yeah, it says drive more slowly. Uh oh. No, it says soft top, yeah. Well, it says drive more slowly. Why does it say that? I think because the top's not all the way down, maybe. Uh oh. Well, I put it all the way down. It said it was all. <laughs> oh my god, see, this is the problem. So go under 37, you should be able to. There we go, now I'm under 37. There we go. Sorry, soft guys, top. I messed it up. Soft top complete. Open, close, soft top completely. It is closed. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we're just gonna deal with that. And as an alternative, the display can be... <laughs> oh my God, this is, yep, yeah, this is why it's <laughs> music. Oh my God. This is the beauty about dealing with modern cars when you're putting down stuff for the first time. All right, I'm gonna pull over here and let this Lexus go by. We're gonna figure this out. <laughs> Cause I don't want it to beep the whole time. All right. Hold it. Soft top and off, there we go. So now it's done. What? Okay. All right. All right. There we go. Being finicky earlier, yeah. but <laughs> and you do still have to hold it, which I'm like, why put it on the screen? I, that's a, must be a safety thing, like a dead man switch, like yeah. So. But it says drive more slow. I don't know. It sounds great with the <laughs> top down. Yeah. Oh so all right, God. since it's not beeping us, let's talk a little bit how it drives with the top down because now we can hear that lovely engine a lot more. <laughs> you know, it makes me wonder, do we even need the SL63? Like the extra 100 horsepower, it only makes it like half a second quicker apparently. We were just, kept, not even, it's like 0.2 of a second or something like oh that. Oh my God, this thing, so stable and it has all this grip and the steering is just really sharp, direct. The suspension's so compliant even in race mode right now. Like, if the sun was out, this is exactly how I'd want to be driving this car out in this situation. Like, I, I mean, it's nice that at least it's not raining, but I really wish the sun was out right now. Cause... The wind buffeting with the windows up and with the wind deflector, not bad at all. Yeah. Like, your hair won't be going all crazy. Yeah, actually, it's, it's, nice. it's pretty common here, and that's the whole point of an SL is it needs to be comfortable, it needs to be quiet, because this is your GT car. Like, yeah. this is the car you're going to put, you know, you know, your spouse next to you and doing like a weekend trip and just like enjoy the nice weather. Uh, and just kind of enjoy driving also because you can you can have some fun on curvy roads with this car Which is really what I love about it the most and then when you put it into comfort It's super comfortable and quiet although we did notice on the highway. There's a little more road noise than we liked um, More than like the s-class convertible had that was yeah, quieter. which I guess I expected the s-class cab to be a little quieter than this But it like you said, it's kind of like a mix in between the two vehicles. Yeah, it's middle ground I'd say it leans more towards I mean, it's it's really in the middle It really is the best of both worlds between the s-class coupe and the GT Roadster Yeah, I mean compared to the last AMG GTR that I had for a week last year like this is far more comfortable Yeah, it's, this ride is great. And it, we've gone over some rough roads, too Yeah, and also it feels almost as fast as that car because of the all-wheel drive because the amg gtr did not have all-wheel drive and it could use it so it is it is really cool and i don't think they're going to put all-wheel drive in the amg gt yeah i think that'll be rear-wheel drive so this seems like more of a competitor to like a bentley Continental gt speed like a convertible and then like a db11 like aston martin not as much 911 at least in my mind yeah no i'm i'm super impressed i think the sl got the redesign that it needed to get in order to finally attract that younger buyer uh, and I think that uh, when this vehicle goes on sale in the spring, it's going to attract a new generation of buyers, luxury buyers, younger buyers that Mercedes really needs, I guess, in this uh, in this segment. And we'll have to wait to see pricing, but so far, Sofiane and I don't see why you would need a 63. <laughs> no. This is already so great. No, because we're. I'm going to say this one's probably starting at 120, and it's going to cost probably 40 grand more for the 63. But uh, we'll we'll hop into the 63 later, and we'll uh, I'll talk about my final judgments on if you should go for the 63 or not uh, at the end of this video. So as I stand out here getting rained on while my drive partner is to sit inside in the warm car, let's talk about my final thoughts about the 2022 Mercedes AMG SL55. Now, first of all, I'm really happy that Mercedes-Benz gave the project, of course, to AMG because I think they've really done a fantastic job at making this vehicle even more impaling. They've really shed the stodgy old person image that the old SL was kind of plagued with. And they've really done a great job at blending the characteristics of the SL Cabriolet with, of course, the AMG GT Roadster. The SL Cabriolet is a little bit too soft, a little too old mannish, while the AMG GT uh, R Roadster was just a little bit too harsh, a little bit too 
race car. This kind of perfectly blends the two worlds together, and it also delivers a package that's just incredibly sexy to look at. Compared to something like a Porsche 911 Cabriolet, I do think this is a better looking car, although personally, I probably might go for the Targa 911 instead, but that's kind of a different type of vehicle. If you guys are looking for a new luxury roadster, this is, for me, one of my new favorites. I love the four liter twin turbo V8. In the SL55, it offers plenty of power, zero to 60 in about 3.6 seconds. I love the fact that it now comes standard with all wheel drive. I love that nine speed auto. I love the interior. The interior has a really high quality, high tech look that just feels expensive, that looks luxurious, and also offers pretty decent room considering the fact that this is a roadster. I like also how they also added a back seat. Even though you can't really put adults back there, you can use it, of course, for packages, for stuff, or putting you know stuff that wouldn't fit in the trunk. And it just makes the car a little bit more practical if you plan to use this as a daily driver. Now, speaking of which, if you guys are looking to buy the new SL, it won't be going on sale until sometime in the spring of next year, so early next year. And AMG has not announced pricing for this new SL just yet. I'm gonna estimate, however, it's gonna start at around $120,000 for the SL55 because this replaces the old SL550. At about 40 grand, I'm gonna estimate for the SL63, which will still undercut the price of something like a 911 Carrera 4S uh, Cabriolet by about $20,000. With options, of course, I have no, no idea how much this one's gonna cost, but again, it gets the kind of attention that you expect from a six-figure car, and it also has the driving dynamics, the technology, and the luxury that we, we expect from the pinnacle of the Mercedes family luxury of roadsters. Well, with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 uh, SL55 AMG. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.